You're hanging with Cher. And Lil. I'm Greg. We're here with Greg Worthington of the Toronto Wolf Pack. Hello, Greg. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you are one of the fans' absolute favor and definitely one of Cher and Lil's favorite. Nice to know. Nice <laughs> to know that I'm, I'm appreciated. Absolutely. You've been here since the very beginning, the inaugural year. What is your motivation in terms of coming to this team? When it started, um, I just thought it was a great opportunity to come play rugby. Uh, you know, a sport that I've grown up with all my life in a, in, a, in a place that I've never visited, never been to before. And if I'm honest, I probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have come here. So the, the, uh, the opportunity to do that was uh, were really appealing. And uh, obviously now I'm, I'm three years in and, uh, and I'm still here enjoying it. Amazing. We're so happy you're here and still here. So true, right? Like at the time, professional rugby league was unknown in, in Toronto. So you guys made a big difference in the city. So talking about the city in the last three years, what have you seen uh, in terms of growth of the sport as well as the team itself? Well, obviously because it was a brand new sport, you know, that the first game there was literally fans here that have never ever seen a rugby league game before. So I think that would, obviously that was a big appealing factor as well, to, to be able to come and show a sport that I've grown up with to a new audience that's an amazing sport to me. And yeah. I think when, when people are introduced to it, in the family environment that it, that it brings, you know, it can be a pretty amazing thing. And, and hopefully now, you know, we're starting to see the increase in, in sort of participation over here of rugby league. We've had we've had a few junior teams come to the games this year that have they've suddenly started taking up you know rugby league sessions. Yes. And uh, and I think that's a bit massive step to, to what we're trying to create here. And uh, you know, and, and it can only go strength to strength. Excellent. Yeah, really inspiring those youth and getting into the sport. What do you think of the city itself, Lamport Stadium, and the fans? The city is amazing. It's you know it's it's different, uh, very different from what I'm used to back home in England. Um, so. You know that it's, it's kind of a nice change. Um, the, the obviously the sport demographic here is massive. The city Absolutely. loves sport. Like they yeah. literally go mad for sport. So you know if we can pinch a little bit of that from the, from the bigger teams, you know I you think don't that need can only be. You can actually yeah. share. Like, honestly, Toronto sports fans are fantastic. They just love all sports. Yeah, the passion the, the passion's uh, is there to see, and, and I think our fan base is growing. You know each year, yes. and like, like I say. Not necessarily pinch the other fans, but like, if we can encourage a few more of them to keep coming, and you know they tell their friends, and and you know we, we want to see this place completely packed out, and uh, I'm sure we will very soon. We would love to see that, and yes, we will. All right, so um, as fans of this intense sport, we understand and appreciate how much work you guys actually put into making this happen, from in terms of conditioning and training. Um, can you give uh, everybody an idea what you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis to prepare yourself for being the top of the game here? Yeah, I mean, training's pretty brutal. Uh, anybody, <laughs> who, anybody who's played rugby league at you know, any level knows the impact that, you, that your body goes through and has to take. But, um, you know, you've just got to be professional and whatever the, uh, the conditions and the coaches put in front of you, you've just got to attack it and, uh, and do it to the best of your ability. But, yeah, there's, there's, there's mornings when you, when you sort of wake up and <laughs> you're not quite sure if your body's willing to get out of bed, but you, you've just got to, you've got to get on with it. And, uh, and that, no, that's part, and part of uh, being a, a professional athlete and a professional rugby league player. Right, and all of you guys have such professionalism and athleticism. I'm going to talk a little bit about the injury that you actually sustained last year, the critical injury that really put you out for a great part of last year and beginning of this year. Um, so... You know, we were in a, just talking about it, thinking about it. Uh, I remember all the fans were standing on the edge of our seats, looking, the, you know, at the field where you were carried off the field. But then you came out on your crutches and you walked around the stadium and you said thank you to the to the fans, and that was fantastic. Like it was very heartwarming. But like, can you give us a little bit of an idea of what goes through your mind when something like that happens, and what gives you strength to come out afterwards? The first minute was obviously I was uh, pretty much lying on the floor in agony. Uh, yeah, it only, it only hurt okay. for about yeah, it only hurt for about a minute because um, apparently, like when the the ligaments fully rupture, oh. the, the, there's no blood supply, so the, the pain stops after that initial uh, that initial start. So they uh, they took me off the field. Um, obviously, checked my leg, said we're gonna have to go for a scan. It doesn't look good. So that's uh, you know that's sport. And uh, once uh, I'd calmed down a bit and uh, sort of got on top of that pain, mm -hmm. yeah, the next step was to strap it up, get on crutches, and come out and uh, watch the rest of the game. But yeah. how, like I mean, that took a lot of strength getting yourself out yeah. and really back out. Yeah, you don't you don't want to sit in the changing rooms by yourself. It's pretty lonely in there. Ah. <laughs> so, but no, it was a it was an injury that happened in in, in sport. Obviously, I've had um, you know pretty much 11 months out from yeah. the injury. Yeah. I've managed to get back and play a few games this year, which you know I'm really happy with. Um, my knee feels good, my body feels good. So, good. 
Um, now I just need to keep training hard, and you know, and hopefully I'll uh, I'll get another chance uh, this year to, to put the shirt on and uh, and hopefully perform well. In terms of your recovery, what what was the biggest challenge for you? Either mentally or physically. What, were you, what do you think it was? It was, uh, it was a bit of both. Obviously, physically, because of the extent uh, extent of the surgery I had, the first step was literally getting out of bed. Um, the first two days, I, I could barely move. My leg was in a fixed splint, uh, so I couldn't bend it for a matter of weeks. Um, so I just set myself like small small goals each each week um, until I could physically get in the gym. I was on on crutches for about eight weeks, so obviously wow. manoeuvring around was it was a bit tricky. But as soon as I got off the crutches, you know, I started going to the gym, working on the things I could work on. And uh, we sat down with the staff, the physio team, uh, the conditioning team, um, and went through the program that was going to ensure that I could get back and, uh, and get back playing well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like I say, so far everything's been really good. My recovery went well. It was long, very long process, but um, I have a good family network around me and uh, I've got I've got great, um, great staff here looking after us. Yeah. And, so far, the proof's been in the pudding that you know my leg's been okay, and I and, yeah, and I went through that really right. Well. So yeah, yeah, just um, just stick with it. It's a long process, but I think if you if you do set set um, short term goals, you know your your, your long term uh, your long term goals will be achieved. Yeah, that's actually really inspirational. Well said. <laughs> it's in every part of life, actually. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, you can cater that to everything. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, story also shows great resilience, and we're thankful for you, you know, and also the staff that brought you back, you know, through that reco yeah. long recovery process. Long recovery, yeah, very long. <laughs> um, so, talking about inspiration, um, what inspired you to get into this sport? How you started your career in rugby league? Well, I, I, um, I was sort of like born into a rugby league family. I spent all my youth going and watching my dad play rugby. Um, when I was Did young, play, yeah, right? my dad played. Yeah, tried to. What? He likes to. Yeah, he likes. He likes to. He likes to think you were all right. But no, oh. he, uh, yeah, he used to play uh, quite we, well. We it was, thank uh, you, it was a bit, Mr. Worthington. It was, it was a bit. It was a bit <laughs> different to me. Him. He played a bit different to me. But um, oh, but yeah, that's I, awesome. I watched, grew up watching my dad play rugby, and uh, I was quite a, a big Bradford Bulls fan when they were in the heyday. Right. When they was uh, at the top of Super League, I used to go and watch watch games down at Oddsall every week. Um, oh, but nice. it, Growing up in, in Bradford, where, where I was born, rugby league was, was massive. Right. You know, Bradford were pulling in crowds of regularly over sort of between 50 and 20, 20 plus thousand. Wow. So um, I grew up with that buzz. So that, that kind of inspired me to play rugby. And uh, all my friends that I grew up with, you know, who I still spend all my time with now, they all they all played rugby for our local team in our village where we grew up. And and yeah, it was uh, it was it was pretty much as simple as that. As soon as I started playing, and, and I never looked back. And uh, I was lucky lucky enough to to make a career out of it, which you know I'm very privileged and honoured that I've been able to do that. That's so nice, and we're we're very lucky that your father inspired you <laughs> to become a professional rugby league player. Uh, give us a um, maybe a quote or uh, wisdom for our young generation who's actually looking to become a rugby league player and what would you say to them? I think the main thing is is when you when you start in a rugby you just got you know if you, if you enjoy it then, then then stick with it you know the game is about enjoyment you know I'm still playing it now even though it's my job I still enjoy the game I still get the buzz when I walk out onto the field that I used to get when I when I was a kid so um, it, it, it's a great it's a great sport for children it, you know it teaches you so many things you, you, your discipline and uh, just the enjoyment that that, that group of friends that you that you grow up playing rugby with, you, you're friends with them for life, and and I think that that's not necessarily the same in every sport. Um, so I think that any any young uh, young child that's wanting to get into rugby, I, I'd I'd advise it. It's a great sport. You meet great people, Absolutely. and uh, you never know, you might be you know lucky like like me to end up having it as your job and uh, and earn a living from it. You get to whack you get to whack people as well, which is good. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're ever feeling a bit down and you you know you. The, the impact side of the game that's pretty good too so yeah it's, it's a great it's a great sport and uh, and great and people great, great community, people that, that's that's the that's one of the main things for me is you, you meet you meet fantastic people in rugby league and and that yes. can only be a good thing for anyone absolutely well thank you so much for your My time pleasure. and uh we wish that you're going to be here for many years to come hopefully we'll see <laughs>